us went through a period of our childhood, where we tried to go on a recreational trip organized by the school in order to spend a long and enjoyable time with his school friends and even teachers. And it extends from one day to days, and the destinations differ, either they are forests, some are wild, and some are even freely, and in the end it depends on the available area closest to you. Safe and fully equipped, which enables you to spend more time without facing obstacles. Except for that long and boring school day, and I am waiting for the time to pass and we will leave for our homes, and inside me I repeat, there is not much left, Chris. This year is the last school year, and after the 12 years will be completed. I spent between fatigue, joy, staying up late, seriousness and diligence. Finally, the bell rang announcing the last class. Unfortunately, the mathematics teacher was absent and did not attend today. Unfortunately, I will keep fighting until the time passes. And the boring school day ends well. While we were waiting, the door opened slowly and the activity and sports teacher entered the classroom amid the joy of everyone. And the first of them was me, because every time this teacher comes to class, he brings good news with him, and I do not think there is a student who hates him. Last year students, I spoke with the administration and coordinated with them. We go on a farewell wild trip, given that the final exams have less than a month left. And this is the least I can offer you, because you are diligent and deserve all the best. He lowered his eyes to the paper and completed his words. After two days of our departure, the bus will come and take us to the mainland, and we will stay there throughout the weekend, and due to your large number. We will divide you into groups, and each group will have two people responsible for themselves, their activities, and eating together. Chris will be. He paused and then said, where's John? I spoke and said, he has an occasional vacation this week, and he traveled with his family for treatment, and I do not think that he will catch our trip. Professor, he lowered his head to the list and said, all the students were divided except for you alone. Well, you, Chris, will be with me. I smiled inside of me, and the smile reflected on my face, and my head nodded in agreement. I did not expect that I would be with a spontaneous and fun person like Professor Steve. I am less than happy that something terrible has finally happened, which will be the most beautiful conclusion to a 12-year study trip. The last two days of school passed, as usual, with its frequent routine, and everyone was excited and eager for the expected trip, which was scheduled for Thursday after the end of work. And I actually came out of the door of our house after I took my supplies, the backpack, and everything I would need there. Students flock until the number is complete, and we board the bus and set off for our destination. On the bus, everyone is happy, singing and dancing, and I feel that this trip will be more exciting than my expectations for it. We halfway through the distance, go outside the city, and stop at one of the side stations to eat snacks to silence the hunger that began to pop up inside us, and time passed until we got close to midnight. And he said, we are almost there, guys. He did not complete his sentence when he learned that everyone was asleep. I raised my hand and said to him, as you can see, they were exhausted and exhausted. He laughed, then when he wanted to talk. Bus imbalanced after one of his tires exploded. This led the driver to lose his total balance on the steering wheel and the bus began to stagger from right to left, and was about to overturn at any moment. The sound of screaming and shouting began to reverberate from everyone amidst the professors and supervisors trying to calm everyone down and control the situation. And fortunately the bus stopped completely before a catastrophe occurred, the door opened and we descended in succession until everyone was outside, 
It was one of the rear tires that exploded because of one of the nails. We moved away a little the bus and the teachers started working on fixing it. The weather was dark and the supervisor was keen not to separate us and to be next to each other in anticipation of anything that could happen. Except for the time and it arrived at one after midnight and the teachers were still trying to fix the bus. It turned out after a while that they had forgotten one of the keys the reform process will not be completed without his presence. The road was completely empty of cars, and there was no one to help us. Mr. J picked up his phone and called the road security, and from what I understood, they would be late for us because the place we are in is far away. And it appears to us from Professor Steve's anger, which for the first time we will see him angry to this degree, and we understood that this matter will last until dawn. The rest of the teachers and supervisors waited for five minutes until he went towards us and said, Guys, we will stay here for a while until we complete our prayers. In this regard, you will go with Professor Adam to one of the stations near here and there is a small hotel in it. You will stay in it until we solve our problem, and from tomorrow morning we will complete our journey. Indeed. Mr. Adam picked up his phone and determined the location, and we started walking on our legs, following him to the station, which is about one and a half kilometers away. Every two minutes I look back and see how far we are from the bus from us, given that the lights were the ones that made me feel safe in this dark night. And I took possession of my heart. I was not reassured about this area and its suspicious calmness, and what terrified me the most is the calmness of the students for all the students, and it may be because they are still sleepy and no one is able to create a reaction. Seconds and the features of the station in front of us began to become clear, which looked gloomy with distant and dim lights, and then it became clear to us completely an old and dilapidated gas station next to it is a supermarket. To say the least, empty, except for a few shelves, and all the items are scattered, random, and out of order, and behind it there is a modest hotel. Or in a more correct sense, a ruin consisting of two floors, a quick look at the place, and calmness is still the master of the situation, and there is no one but us. And at the entrance of the hotel, Mr. Adams spoke and said, Stay here, children, I will go to book rooms, then I will come to you from a distance, and then head inside. Step by step enabled me to explore the place carefully until I was behind the building. I raised my eyes up and caught a glimpse of a small child standing behind the last window on the second floor and looking at me without any movement. Residents wanted to spend a rest in it before completing their trip, but the reason that expelled this idea from my head is that there are no cars around the hotel. I could not stop looking and I kept looking until suddenly he put his hand on the window and then smiled, and at that moment I heard the voice of Mr. Adam calling my name. I withdrew from my place and went back to the entrance of the hotel quickly and the first thing he saw me was he said, where were you? Didn't I warn you not to move? It is fortunate that I found many vacant rooms and the hotel does not have any guests and this means that we will take our rest. My eyes widened in shock and I said between myself and myself, There is no guest, and the child that I saw a while ago, the teacher interrupted my train of thoughts when he pulled me from my hand and said, You must you sleep right now. It seems that your mind is not there with you, and it is clear that you are exhausted. I preceded him a step until I heard him say behind me, our rooms are all on the ground floor and Kim should not go up to the second floor because you have nothing to do there. I received the key to my room and then I entered it and threw myself on the bed trying to gather my mind and fragment myself being alone before my partner Professor Steve came and found me shocked. Exactly half an hour later, and after my eyes fell asleep with exhaustion and fatigue, I panicked from my place at the sounds of people running and laughing from the second floor, and the voices were increasing. 
I did not calm down and it was clear that they would never let me sleep. I will not be able to sleep with the amount of disturbing voices above my head exactly. And I think Mr. Adam is wrong and there are inmates on the second floor and they can come after we enter our rooms. I thought and thought until I decided to give them five minutes and if these voices do not disappear I have to find a solution. More than ten minutes passed and the disturbance and movement continued and I could not bear more than this time. I left my room nervously and went to the reception. Unfortunately, there was no one there. I looked outside, and there was no creature. Whether from the station workers or even cars of guests who arrived after us. I pulled a breath I went deep and climbed the stairs without retreating and arrived in front of the door. I did not lose the room or linger while looking for it because it is the only room from which these sounds of running and laughing come out very clearly. The second, and before I lifted it, it opened and behind it appeared the same little boy that I had seen from outside when I was exploring the hotel from the outside. For a few seconds we stared at each other until I spoke and said, Would you like to call your father or someone older than you, baby? And that child was still looking at me without making his eyelids tremble. I was not comfortable with his looks and I felt something unnatural in the meantime. Until he finally spoke and said with all innocence, But my father is not here. There is no one in this room but me. I raised my eyebrows in disapproval and said, How not there is no one and the amount of noise and noises from inside the room shows that there are at least three people. Then he said a sentence that forced me to remain silent, immobilized. And the misfortune was that the voice that came out of it was the same innocent, childish voice that I heard the first time. It mentioned in a rough and sharp tone, Go and continue your sleep before my brothers come up to you and hurt you. And before he completes his conversation, he quickly enters and closes the door. My body was paralyzed and I was unable to move or move any part of my body except for my eyes, which expanded from the horror of the scene I saw seconds ago. Chris, what are you doing here? I remembered the sentence and it made me wake up from my shock and fall to the ground reassuringly when I knew it was Mr. Steve. I turned to him quickly and ran towards him and hugged him tightly while I passed out. He began to calm me down and then said, What happened? Chris, reassure me. And I began to tell him everything that happened, but we went downstairs to the room, and I felt reassured as soon as I finished, and after I finished talking. He was surprised and said that all I know from the receptionist is that the hotel is empty today and there is no one in it except us. I did not believe his words until Professor Steve and I went to the receptionist, who in turn assured me that there was no one but us and suggested that we all go up to see the room on the second floor in order to calm down and be reassured. But I refused to go back there and the professor went with the employee to make sure that there is no one in all the rooms. All what I did is that I went to my room with my mind preoccupied and all my thoughts revolved around what happened a little while ago. I pushed the door with all my strength and entered. And I wish I had not entered to see the scene that I saw, which forced every hair in my body to stand in its place. Professor Steve, what are you doing here? Oh God, what is happening here? And he said, where have you been, Chris? Aren't you supposed to be asleep at this point? I could not answer his question and tell him that I was with you a while ago, or I was with someone who looked like you. I was not able to answer his question and tell him that I was with you a while ago, or I was with someone who looked like you, but unfortunately I fell unconscious from the horror of the shock. And the supervisors, even Mr. Steve, were checking on me and telling me that the cause of my fainting was the tiredness and exhaustion that was consuming my body. We set out to complete our journey after the terrifying and suspicious night that I lived through, 
and that I did not know how to classify it to the point where I became obligated to my fellow students with every step he took. And I still think of the child and the strange person who looks like Professor Steve in the hotel. And throughout the trip, I remained silent and did not speak throughout the trip until we returned to the city in which I reside. And I did not tell anyone what I saw from the students and from my family. And even today, two years after my story and I am on the cusp of the university, I still remember what happened to me that night in all its details and events. And every time it comes to my mind that I fear more and I feel as if it is happening to me until now.